What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I finally have the hash rate review for the RTX 3070 Ti. Yes, this is a light hash rate GPU because, well, there are no non light hash rate versions of the 3070 Ti in particular. So, we're going to be taking a look at not only Ethereum with of course the latest unlock unlockable miners such as lol miner in this particular case version 1.38 but we will also be looking at other algorithms to try to determine which algorithm is the most profitable for this specific gpu now in my testing what i have found is that there are many other coins at this point more profitable for the 3070 ti over Ethereum right now, and we'll get into all of those details right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is BT Miners. Purchasing mining equipment online can be dangerous. With all of the fake storefronts and scams, it can be hard to find a reliable source. That's why when BT Miners reached out for a channel sponsorship, I started by verifying that ordering and delivery went smoothly with a purchase of my own. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners is a trusted source by both asicminervalue.com and cryptominer.com. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code free shipping 2021 for free shipping on your order. Welcome back. So starting things off, let's just hop into the specifications. So the specifications for this GPU is going to be 6,144 CUDA cores with eight gigabytes of GDDR6X across a 256 bit bus resulting in, of course, a memory clock speed of 19 gigabits per second. It is a PCI Express 4.0 capable GPUs, but in the case of mining, we'll be using essentially a riser that is plugged up to a separated power supply for exact power numbers and we'll go over that here in a second. It has three DisplayPort 1.4a ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, and that is for the support of up to 8K 60 frames per second. HTCP support is 2.3 and it does support quad displays. Recommended power supply is 750 watts and the power consumption is 300 and 10 watts. Now with a typical gold rated power supply, in my experience, we are looking at 350 watts uh, as far as total most power being able to be pulled from the GPU at any given time. This power is delivered via two 8-pin PCIe power plugs and a single 6-pin PCIe power or VGA cable. And the DirectX support is 12 ultimate and the cooling is the ice storm 2.0 which is a three fan design it does have it is a three slot card as a result of the cooler so it is going to be thicker and not necessarily fit well into server chassis for mining it doesn't support sli and of course the rest of it is it does support windows 10 it does support Linux if you're looking at mining on Ubuntu. As far as that, that seems to be working no problem. And then you have a Zotac Gaming RGB support bracket, which is super interesting, kind of cool. Never seen one included before, but in the case of mining rigs, you probably won't be needing one or using one anytime soon. There is a three pin RGB header cable in case you want to connect that accessory to any given motherboard. So let's go ahead and talk about the test bench. It's right back here. It is running the ASRock B550 Tai Chi motherboard with 64 gigabytes of memory clocked at 2,666 megahertz. So it is a little slower on that front. And then it has a PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive running Windows 11 on the current setup. The CPU itself is cooled by a Noctua NHD15. And then the way we have it configured is two separate power supplies. One power supply is basically powering up the rig, and in this case, an RTX 3060 as well to get the video out of the system. And then the second power supply is just using a 24 pin jumper on a separate 750 watt gold rated power supply from EVGA. And that is powering the riser 
as well as the GPU itself. That does require, of course, four VGA cables. But what that allows me to do is get accurate numbers off of the kilowatt for each algorithm in a real world setting. Now, here is a caveat to the real world setting that you need to take into account. And that is that the gold rated power supply is only going to be 84% efficient. So if you wanted true numbers, you can calculate that out by taking any of these power numbers and basically multiplying it by 0.84, giving you the realistic number. What is reported in software and especially mining software is always underreported especially when we start taking into account power supply efficiency. So any of the advertisements that you see for Ethereum doing 53 mega hash a second at 155 watts, well, it's kind of true, but not completely accurate because we aren't pulling all of that information. We are not pulling, for example, the power coming through the PCI slot in a lot of cases and we are not accounting for the efficiency loss on your given GPU. This is why in mining, it's really important to make sure that you do think about investing into platinum rated power supplies as it will bump that efficiency up above 90%. And that is just a huge, huge improvement over mining farms. Pretty much every power supply, except for my backup power supplies at the farm are platinum rated for this specific reason. Let's go ahead and hop into the numbers. We will talk about Ethereum first. For Ethereum, we're using LOL Miner 1.38. And initially the numbers are not nearly fa that fantastic, right? We're talking about 48 mega hash a second at 350 watts. You definitely wanna get in there and start tuning that power down as much as possible with Ethereum especially. It's also not necessarily as easy to tune that power down across all algorithms. Ethereum is a lot easier to basically tune that in. So we went ahead and got in there and started tuning it down. We got down to the 60% range before we started dropping too much hash rate for it to really be effective at that. Basically, once we hit the 50% range 55 percent we would be around 45 mega hash a second without any memory overclock and then once we hit 50 percent we started dipping down and even getting some errors to where the card wasn't stable definitely not going to be 24 7 stable so 60 percent is where we locked in there for the memory we were able to overclock the memory to plus 1800 megahertz in MSI Afterburner. This will be different in HiveOS, and if we wanna talk about my HiveOS settings, I think I'll save that for another video. You just really need to know what the capability of this GPU is going to be. Now, the good thing about this particular setup is because we're using the riser and that sort of thing, any wonkiness or slowdown due to the riser would be detected and we can basically swap it between a full by 16 slot or of course that buy one PCI E-Riser, or buy four, excuse me. But that's a quarter of the technical bandwidth that the GPU could be capable of. So once we got that tuned in, we also took the core overclock and tried to play with it, but there's really no effect when you're turning the power consumption down. Things will change when we move over to Hive OS and have access to absolute core clock. And we'll have to talk about that specifically for this GPU in a deep dive. That being said, it is something that has been functioning well on other cards from NVIDIA just across the entire 3000 and even 2000 series lines, absolute core clock in HiveOS is what you're looking at. So since that didn't really make an effect, we did kind of test it at negative 200 megahertz. It didn't really change anything. But with those settings, what we ended up with was essentially 53 mega hash a second at 200 watts, which seems pretty consistent across the board. Now I did Google some overclock settings. The first pop-up of course was talking about 155 watts and like 53 mega hash a second. Those settings in particular did have the power tuned down to 50%. What could be different between my particular GPU and the GPU that was used in that sample? Well, that could be more than likely the additional power adapter on the extreme hollow from Zotac. 
And this is the top of the line 3070 Ti. It does have more power delivery options and just that extra one being plugged in is going to account for some of that power consumption. Another thing about that to keep in mind of course, is going to be that we are reading directly off the wall and not directly from the software itself in any form or fashion. Now, if we did do a calculation and take that 200 watts and multiply it times the efficiency of the gold rated power supply at 84%, you would be looking at a true power consumption of the GPU itself to function at 160 eight watts and that's an important thing to understand when you're going out and reading all of these different overclocks and so on what the true power consumption is if you're going to be plugging it in and mining at it on it on a gold rated power supply at these settings you will be looking at 200 watts on your power bill and that's really what matters here so Let's go ahead and talk about Auto Lycos. So for Auto Lycos, of course, that coin is going to be Ergo, one of my favorite proof of work coins, uh, not only because of its tie in with Cardano, but also because it has been moving forward as a project quite quickly. We have decentralized finance available on the blockchain, on the Ergo blockchain. We also have an auction house available, lots of things moving very quickly. So the team is definitely working uh, around the clock to basically improve the coin. So it's one to take a look at and to keep into consideration, one that I'm super interested in. Now, the base settings on what to mine will show that the 3070 Ti does a 170 mega hash. This particular GPU with the overclocks clocked in at plus 1800 megahertz on the memory, the negative 200 megahertz on the core and 80% power consumption will result in that 181 mega hash a second. However, the power consumption is a little bit higher at the 214 within the software. And then if we even go beyond that, we are looking at around 300 watts at the wall. So that's what we've clicked into what to mine for these calculations. Pretty significant amount more than Ethereum. And this is going to be a trend across the board pretty much with all of these coins. The next coin that we have or the next algorithm is going to be Octopus. And for Octopus, what we have as a coin is going to be the Conflux. And Conflux in this case is going to be 77 to 78 mega hash a second with the same overclock settings except the power limiter is at 100%. So why am I leaving the power limiter at 100%? What could we do in the future to fix this? Well, one of the things we could do is absolute core clocks, of course, and a deep dive on this specific algorithm. What you would need to start doing is calculating hash per watt. I don't have time to do that for an initial hash rate review, and it is a topic that I've put on my list to discuss with you guys because it is going to be not only GPU dependent, but also rig dependent and power cost dependent as well. So if you're paying more in power consumption, it could work out that getting the extra or less, it could work out that maybe paying more uh, for the power to the card to get the full hash rate is worth it to you. The capabilities though of this GPU, like I said, 78 mega hash a second on this algorithm does result in a power usage of 350 watts at the wall. So pretty much maxing out the power consumption for this particular GPU. So next we have Ravencoin and for Ravencoin, we are at once again, 353 Watts. This is the highest power consumption I saw across all of them. And the hash rate was 42 mega hash a second. Now in my experience with Ravencoin, turning the power down at all has almost never been worth it across pretty much any of the GPUs. Unfortunately, uh, that being said, Hopefully we'll have a different story here on a deep dive later. What that did result in power wise and hash rate wise or hash rate wise was 42 to 43 mega hash a second. And that is what we plugged into what to mine. We also have Firo to take a look at. And with Firo, we were looking at 41 mega hash a second. 
and once again at 350 watts. And then we also took a look at Cero because Cero has been a coin that has been pretty popular as far as on what to mine for profitability. Here's the thing about Cero. A lot of the pools have been shut down. There's really only three pools left. The, the exchanges as well are not as widely accepted. So just because it looks like it's super profitable, do your own research on this particular coin and be very, very careful around it because the way those exchanges that it's currently on works is you can kind of drive the price up really easy by easily buying the cheaper coin and it can get messed with a lot more. It's harder to convert, but it does technically have some of the most profit. And this was due to on the 3070 Ti clocking in at that 42 mega hash a second, even with the 350 watts. Finally, I wanted to talk about Flux, and Flux looks like it should be profitable on this particular GPU as we see it clocking in on what to mine by default at 61 mega hash a second. However, in LOL Miner version 1.38, with the overclock settings and anything we try to do, it never going above 35 solutions a second. So this doesn't seem to be the actual case for flux in particular if you guys have any clues as to what may be going on here in my particular case let me know this will be getting thrown into a hive os rig where i will perform more tests and maybe it's a linux thing the reason or linux versus windows thing and the reason i say this is because another problem in windows that i was having was with cortex now with cortex for with lol miner or let's see, it was T-Rex minor and G minor. What we had was essentially an issue where it says the GPU, well, in one case, it said that the GPU didn't have enough video memory. In the other case, it just never detects it and mines with it. So that problem from what I was doing research on in the case of Cortex was specifically due to Windows issues. Once people moved to Linux, they were able to mine that particular coin with no issues. Maybe that's also why we have lower hash rate return. Maybe there's something going on within the Windows ecosystem and we'll have to deep dive that later. But with all that aside, let's go ahead and hop into the profitability numbers. So as you can see here, and we actually do need to change this, this Zell hash to the 35 mega hash a second just to make sure that it doesn't mess anything up and calculate that out. We have Ethereum at 53 mega hash a second at 200 watts. We have Auto Lycos at 186 mega hash a second at 300 watts. We have Octopus at 77 mega hash a second at 350 watts. Zell hash at the 35 hash a second with 180 watts. It's more than that, but it really is going to be irrelevant at that hash rate anyways. Kapow, we had at 63 mega hash a second at 353 watts. And then we had the Prog Pow at 63 mega hash a second at 350 watts. And finally, Firo Pow at 41 mega hash a second at 350 watts. The results here show that we have Cero coming in first at $6.17 a day after power costs of 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, like I said, the the exchange of this can be a little bit difficult it's on gate.io and it's not like a super high cap volume necessarily compared to some of the other ones even like ravencoin which we're going to talk about here as well so ravencoin comes in second at five dollars and 41 cents a day after power costs and six dollars and 26 cents a day before power cost we have xano coming in third, and that is at $5.60 a day in revenue, $4.76 a day after power cost. We then have Conflux, and we start to see a huge drop off here, 
but you can still be profitable on Conflux at $3.70 a day before power and at $2.86 a day after power. With Firo, you have $3.60 a day before power with $2.76 a day after power. And then finally, we do have Ergo clocked in here at $3.38 a day before power and $2.66 a day after power. Ethereum Classic's coming in pretty poorly, even below our poorly performing flux performance on this particular GPU. So it's not something that I would necessarily look into at this point, but maybe that changes in the, in the future. Also, Etho for another ET hash algorithm, not performing that well either at a dollar a day. So really what you're gonna be looking at is probably something like Ravencoin is my pick for the 3070 Ti at this point. Things can change depending on pricing and all of that stuff. The only downside with Ravencoin is going to be power consumption. And it is really going to be important to try to deep dive Ravencoin and pin that in to the best prices possible. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. And yes, I do have, this is actually a nose clip for a uh, swimmer's nose. And it is in here to keep the compression down because I am developing some cauliflower ear so i'm gonna be a little bit uglier on camera but i think it'll be okay i'm just enjoying learning jujitsu and i'm not going to quit anytime soon so i have decided to concede my ears to the cauliflower gods hopefully you guys have a better idea of what to look for in your 3070 ti for mining after watching this if you have any questions or comments please let me know down in the comment section below hit that like button and the dislike button nobody else can see but i can see so if you disliked it you can do that as well and then just let me know what you guys are thinking we do have a review for the rx 6600 coming up soon as well as the 3600 xt an a2000 that i'm trying to get my hands on and a few we have a lot of parts we have motherboards we have rig frames tons of reviews coming to the channel so if you've been missing those don't worry i got your back and for the new year we'll be hitting it hard i'll see you next tuesday if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe to see more also you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency